Hi there, welcome to my channel. I'm making this video to expose some things I have found about Powder the other day, and we'll also talk about Milo and the way he's been bullying her when she was a child. But most importantly, why he's been doing so, and what it did to her mind and self-perception, because I've realized a few things that other people didn't talk about yet in videos. So I thought I should share it with you guys. Because we all crave for more arcane content and analysis of this masterpiece. There's no need to say that Silco's the one to have awakened Powder's true potential, that's one thing sure, but fact is, this potential was already there when Powder was a child. Like, when she was a very young child, when she lived with her parents in Vi. But whether it was Milo or the life in the lanes that made it hard for her to live up to it, we can't know for sure, but it definitely was there before, but then disappeared, while she was living with Vi and the others under Vander's care. I wanted to make this video to show how the script and Fortich animation of Arcane made a genius work of art to denunciate the fact that when you keep putting someone down because of your own insecurities, then that person will become exactly what you say she is. It's like an indirect shout out to bullies, and another way to accentuate Patter's glow up to Jinx living up to her true potential, and I just love how every time I rewatch Arcane, I found more micro expressions, or micro hidden messages, brought to us by Fortich, and I feel like I will keep unraveling more each time, so it's really thrilling. I just can't imagine what season 2 will bring us, and I can't wait for it. Anyway, let's try and make this short. First let's start with Milo. Most of us thought of Milo as a mere bully to Patter in Act 1. But truth is that he is himself insecure, and Arcane shows us that in many scenes. He's actually being himself bullied by Clagger, even if it might not be to the extent of how Milo's bullying Powder. Oh, what's the matter, Milo? You worried Powder's gonna beat you again? Hey, if she didn't keep fixing these things, I wouldn't keep missing. But he's is also kind of bullied by Vi, even if Vi doesn't bully him directly, but is more straightforward to him. About everything. What? And brag non-stop. Okay, okay, I see where this is going. Take fights with the group when we need to focus. Vi, I... And tell strangers on the street that we got a nice call? I, I, I didn't mean Powder's that. my problem. Okay, your problem is never knowing when to shut up, but I'm gonna help you with that. Ready? You see this look on my face? This will always mean it's time to Bullying shut wouldn't up. be the right word, it's more like I, she's putting him back in his place, and sometimes mocks him like a sister would. Powder. Before Milo fills the bag with junk. But Maybe since Clagger was already bullying him, for Milo, not having Vi on his side, perfect. must have made him feel like he was bullied by Vi too. That's why his way to be noticed and accepted is to make lame jokes, and try to bring people with him on the bullying powder thing. You did what?! Who saw that coming? We never should have gone over there. Does it matter? The stuff's gone. It's all right, Powder. At least you're okay. But okay. Vi doesn't play along, and always protects Powder, so either way, the same way Powder stuff. felt it, Milo must have felt it too. We can see the Powder sees and understands that, and probably Pretty does much. Milo know she knows, and that's why he doesn't want to appear weak in her eyes, because she's younger than him, Vi. but most of all, he doesn't want to appear weak to Vi's eyes, because he sees her like a mother or big sister figure. We can see many times that Milo tries to have Vi's approval or attention, and is undeniably jealous of Powder and the way Vi is protecting her and caring for her. Not to mention that on top of that, Milo knows Powder can be stronger than him, like the scene where she beats him at the gunplay shows it. Just don't take Powder next time. His own insecurities then leads him to be frustrated, and thus leads him to be mean to her. Milo's insecurities also show, while he's trying to free Vender, and here's how Arcane script written by Amanda Overton and animated by Fortich, showed how, cheered up by Vander's encouragement, Milo finally stopped shaking, and managed to unlock his chains. It shows how with encouragement instead of blaming one person, you'll gain better results and unpower that person, just like Powder was afraid of jumping down the roof in the first episode, but managed to do so after Vi encouraged her. Called it. This is on you, Vi. I'll get no. her. No! Powder, look at me! What did I tell you? That... I'm ready. That's right! Thanks. 
Problem is Milo is jealous of the way Vi keeps on encouraging and protecting Powder, because he wished Vi would do so with him. But since he's older and isn't his brother by blood, probably does Vi not feel the need to do so with Milo, because she thinks he's older enough to have responsibilities like her, and take care of himself. But fact is, Milo's just another orphan with no relatives other than their second-hand family, and since he's already bullied by Clagger, being the oldest one and needing someone to tease to have some fun in their daily hard life in the lanes, Milo was hoping Vi would be the one to cheer him up, like she does for Powder. But since she doesn't, his frustration of feeling uncared for, rejected and weak, goes back to Powder, who is herself feeling that exact same way because of him. Now, that was just to explain why Milo was a bully to Powder, and we all know how much that affected her, since the voice she hears later is mostly Milo's corpse bullying her, picturing her own anxieties. But all that came from one thing. By telling her she was a jinx, which made Powder's mind remember all the times Milo bullied her and told her that. By telling her Milo was right all along, unvalidated all the time she encouraged her. And to Powder, it was like her only true relative and role model was bullying her in her turn. That made something important snap in Powder's head, but that explains why she threw herself into Silco's arms like that. I saw a lot of people wonder why she threw herself like that onto Silco, and why she let go off by so quickly, saying she wasn't her sister anymore. But regardless of the fact Powder thought Vi abandoned her not once but twice, the way Vi told her Milo was right, and bullied her like she'd been bullied these last years living in the lanes, made her forsake this family she always felt like she doesn't belong in. In the Council's Archives short stories, a kind of detective story game that was launched onto League of Legends before Arcane's release, in Jinx part, we can read an entry in her diary, while she's letting on her thoughts about her guilt, and how she feels towards Vi abandoning her. The entry said, we were never a family. That shows, just like it was shown in Arcane and Enemy music video, that Powder was feeling like she didn't belong in the second-hand family, and was already struggling with finding her place with them, seeing how she already lost her parents and only had Vi to rely on. But family stick together, you said it yourself. I know what I said. I want to fight, I can help. You're not ready. Vi growing up, had her have other responsibilities than taking care of Powder. Just like Vander, her new father figure, was giving more attention to Vi because she was older and he felt she had this growing rage to fight in her that he knew would bring trouble. Even if Vander was kind to Powder and loved her, he didn't really care for her feelings or talk to her, since he thought Vi was taking care of her. But fact is Powder was already struggling inside, which Vi couldn't really do anything about even if she'd realized it. And being put down all the time by Milo surely didn't help with comforting her already broken soul. That brings us to her running up to Silco in a desperate need to be cared for and loved by someone, even it being the one who just attacked her family. Probably, in her mind, did she feel like since this man was fighting her family, and her family had rejected abandoned and attacked her all her life, then she'll team up with that man and feel rage towards her family too. Just like they've been feeling it towards her, or so she must have felt and misunderstood it anyway. There's no point in saying Silco did a wonderful job in awakening her potential, even though he probably took her in thinking about taking revenge on Vander and Vi in the beginning, but we know he ended up really caring for her, and taught her his own perception of the world and its people, and Powder understood it perfectly, since she was herself feeling the same things in her core towards enforcers, and the family who rejected her. In her diary, once again, she says in multiple entries that Silco and her are perfect for each other because they're both broken, and we can see her thoughts change as she goes from missing Vi and wondering about where she is, and why she left her, to Vi lying to her all her life, and Powder being Powder no more, and being Jinx now. I won't talk about how Powder's true potential was awakened by Silco, because it clearly shows in Act 2 and 3, we all saw how Jinx was fighting like a badass, and was clearly as intelligent as Piltover's most two scientists, who managed to crack the hextic like she did on her own, but what I wanted to show in this video was a simple parallel I discovered, and that haven't been talked about yet, as I know of anyway. See the scene of Vi's memories, when she's injured, and has taken Caitlyn to the place she used to live with her mother and Powder. In a split second, we can see she's remembering Powder playing on the roof wooden beams, which caught my attention, seeing how Powder, some years after, in the first episode, looks afraid of heights, and is scared to slide down the roof. Later, when the enforcers go down the last drop in search for the kids that exploded the building in Piltover, they are all hiding in the ceiling. 
Powder's again too weak to hold on to the beam, and is struggling not to fall. Echo sees her, and points it out for Vi to see, but fortunately they escape the enforcer's attention and Powder ends up falling a second after he leaves the room. That made me realize, just how much the lanes, this broken family, and especially Milo had put her down, and had silenced her true potential. Her true potential, that she already had, when she was a kid probably around 5 or 6 having no troubles playing and running around on the ceiling's beams, was locked up inside, because she was being looked down upon, and bullied so much throughout the years. But when she was taken in by Silco, she then regained her self-confidence, and started enjoying the heights again. We can see her staying on top of Silco's office ceiling after the cargo attack scene. There are graffiti there, and some of her stuff, that show us she's been finding this place for herself, when she probably was still a child, around the time Silco took her in. We then see her playing with fire and heights many times when she's become Jinx, and like Arcane script author said on Twitter in one of her answers, Jinx doesn't have a healthy fear of death, that's one thing sure, but we can see she has reappropriated herself this pleasure of being up on heights, that she apparently had when she was a child. She appears comfortable having her workshop on a high structure too, or laying down on the pall, having her legs in the empty space beneath it, or even reading the book she stole from Piltover with her head thrown down in the empty space beneath her. Before the bridge scene too, she's also standing on a high building, and doesn't feel bothered by the high. I don't think Silco really awakened anything in her, like he taught her things or filled her mind with his own thoughts, all he did, was unlock what was already inside her. Same goes for Jinx's wrath and rage, but I will show that in another video, when I will talk about the true beginning of Jinx's traumas, and how it all really started for Powder. Anyway I hope you liked this video, it was just some things I realized and wanted to share with you guys. Please let me know what you thought of it in the comments. I will soon come up with more analysis and things I discovered, and that haven't been talked about on the internet yet. So you can subscribe to the channel, if you're curious and don't want to miss it. See you soon, and thanks for watching. Next video will be a time bomb analysis, and discoveries I made the other day. You guys aren't ready for what I found. That would definitively inspire the time bomb fandom for sure. So be sure to subscribe, if you don't want to miss any of it.